Williams was probably the most familiar of the new startups. Uh, my mother was still with me, and she was very involved in the family because that's the way Chris is. He includes the family. And the startup was rough. They were doing the building in an amazing short period of time from ground up. So the workers were there 12, 18 hours a day, so they got tired of fast food, especially my brother who had a very delicate stomach. So my mother and I would prepare meals every day and take them up to the factory. My mother was a very well-known pie maker. So I had taught as a baby, I had Carrie, and the four of us would go up every night and prepare dinner for everybody that was in the control room, all the construction people. So when it came time for the startup, there were a few, let's say, glitches. So Mr. Roofer, Chris, decided that he was going to stay up there and he literally stayed up there six weeks. The first night he stayed there, he busy, 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 and he got ready to shower. And so at the end of the night, after I'd served everybody, I went and checked on him and went into the trucker's trailer. And he was lying on a mattress covered with plastic and one towel that was covering him, which was the towel that he had showered in. So my mother and I proceeded to get in the car with the two little ones, drive all the way back to Sacramento, and get bedding and take it back to him and make him a bed. And there he stayed for six weeks, literally. So I got a funny story here about Chris. We were in the Sacramento River doing a little boat cruise and uh, we were picking up Todd Harder and his wife, Melanie Harder in Old Sacramento. And it's a public dock, but it's a, a private barge. It's all, the gates are all locked, etc. And so we're pulling up slowly to pick up Todd and Melanie Harder and the person that operates the barge comes out of his office and says, you cannot dock here. This is not a public space. And Chris says, I own this barge and this dock and we will dock here. And we quickly pulled up to the barge. Todd and Melanie hopped over the locked fence and jumped on board and we took off. So Chris is the type of guy that doesn't like the answer no, or he can't do anything, because I'm gonna tell you, he puts his mind to it and he does it. So, and it's great working with him and seeing everything that he does, it's amazing. Story time. A lot of the stories of the early days were, I was quite young, so I don't, probably don't remember them that well, but there's one, especially when involved in trucking, that uh, I particularly remember because I was more or less at the center of it. And I probably don't remember the details as well as maybe my dad or my mom would tell a story, even maybe my sister, she was three years older than I was. Uh, I had to be about maybe six, six years old, something around that age. And we're driving down I-5 from Sacramento. We, we live in Sacramento, so we drive down I-5 to go to the factories uh, all the time. I still do to this day. But at that time, uh, my mom usually drove. Either my sister or I was in the front seat um, the other sibling was in the rear, the rear driver's side seat, and my dad would always sit in the rear passenger seat. So that's how we would always drive to the factories as a family. Uh, and one time, I believe it was maybe my mom made a comment or something like that, that, that I had never been inside of a, a truck, never driven in a truck. My dad's never taken me. I'm sure maybe it was a, maybe she started as a snide remark, like, oh, you don't do this, you don't show your kids these things. And so uh, usually when you're driving down and it's season time, you see a lot of trucks on the road all the time. They're always passing or you're passing them. You, hopefully you're passing them because they should be going slower than you. So uh, finally my dad says, all right, okay, fine. Something of that nature. And he says, let's pull over this, this truck, one of, one of our trucks. So uh, my mom starts honking and, and waving at this gentleman, probably in front of him, behind him, trying to get him to pull over. Finally, I, I would assume reluctantly he does because he has no idea what's going on. Um, and so it transpires that my, my dad must have got out of the car and went and talked to the driver. Maybe some phone calls were exchanged with the dispatch office. But at the end of the day, uh, my dad took the initiative and, and it's always been the way he has been is to, if you, if you can do something, do it right now. So that's what he did. He pulled over the truck, asked the truck driver if he could drive the truck all the way back to the cannery, which Oh, it had to be probably another 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes to the cannery because I feel like I remember exactly where we pulled over. It was in one of the small towns along the way going down I-5. And so he, he asked the driver if he could drive the truck and he said, you can go in the car with my family. And uh, so he got in the truck and 
proved to me that he could still drive a truck and, that, and that's where his origins were and that's how he put his way through college. So he showed me that he still had that talent. And uh, we got back up on the road. My mom followed us and the gentleman sat exactly in the same seat that uh, my dad usually sat in and still sits into this day in the same exact car. So it was, it was, an, it was an interesting experience, but uh, it was a really great one. When I was little, my dad had come up with the, the Morningstar company logo himself. And you know, it's, it's old school, it's nothing fancy, but uh, you know, you've got the Morningstar over the arch and then you've got the company or packing company or trucking company or whatever underneath it. There was a tomato in the middle. And I, I must have been yeah, six, seven years old, something along those lines. And I had asked my dad, I said, you know, why isn't the tomato happy? And <laughs> me being a kid, it was just something that I just genuinely was like, I think it would look better with a smiley face. You know, it's like some people dot their eyes with hearts. I thought the tomato would look happier. <laughs> with a smiley face. And so of course at the time graphic design wasn't so far along. So it just has these two holes in this smile. Um, what I didn't realize as a kid was that those boxes, those bins were gonna go all over the world. <laughs> um, and ever, I mean, even now I, I go back in and I check in and make sure the logo is still there with the smiley face. It hasn't been updated, um, but it's it's been one of those things that I, I, left, I must have just decided I was gonna leave my mark somewhere and it had to be on the happy smiley tomato. <laughs>